The Great Zimbabwe by Sarah Matthew and Brandon. What is the Great Zimbabwe? Well, it's a hundred acres of granite enclosures, and not one of them was straight. It's most likely a stone palace. The great enclosure, which is the edifice's most impressive structure, was called Mumbahuru by local Karanga. Its elliptical outer wall is more than 800 feet long and contains an estimated 182,000 cubic feet of stone, which is more than all the other sites ruins combined. Where is the Great Zimbabwe? Well, according to my map, the southeastern Zimbabwe on the south Zimbabwean Plateau is where the Zim Great Zimbabwe is located. Sorry, that was kind of hard to understand. Okay. Who built the Great Zimbabwe? Okay, so here's a picture of the Shona tribe and the Limba tribe, which are some of the um, people that claim responsibility for the building of the Great Zimbabwe. Um, well, anyway, the question who built it has been fully answered. But the work of the BSA and the independent archaeologists like Hoyo de Barros have concluded that Africans did build the city. The Shona and Venda maintain that their ancestors were responsible for the Great Zimbabwe, but the Limba are particularly insistent on their claim. They're a tribe with Semitic origins, and certain evidence appears to support the Limba claim. For instance, unlike other Bantu tribes who bury their dead in a crouched posture, the Limbo bury theirs in an extended position, as did the ancient Zimbabweans. Hmm, interesting. When was the Great Zimbabwe built? Well, it was built as early as the 11th century by a Bantu-speaking group of sub-Saharan Africans. It flourished during the 14th and 15th centuries as a major Iron Age trade hub. It eventually was abandoned though by its inhabitants around mid-15th century due to lack of resource and trading opportunity. The next question is obviously, why did they build the Great Zimbabwe? Well, many believe that Zimbabwe is a contraction of the Shona phrase, Zimba Zaba Mambe, which means House of Stone. The Shona are Bantu people of Zimbabwe and southeastern, southern Mozambique. But others feel that the word most likely derives from Zimbabwe, Roy, which means venerated house. It's a term usually reserved for chiefs or chiefs' houses or graves. Well, the extent of the religious, political, and social and economic uses of the city are currently unknown. And several buildings, especially in the Great Enclosure site, have buildings whose uses are debated on, which makes it so hard to figure out why they actually built the Great Zimbabwe. It, well, it, it was built in an area where Sub-Saharan African goods could be traded with the northern areas of Africa, as well as Asia and India. This is evidenced by the different trade items found throughout the city, which makes it likely a trading hub of some sort, maybe like a market. Who knows? Um, the Great Enclosure, which encircles a series of smaller stone walls and a conical tower shaped like a stone beehive, was likely a royal residence. So, you know, this was may have been a royal residence area for maybe nobility and also an area for trade. So like a place where people can meet up, like, um, like I'm thinking, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you.